Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. This is Connor Foy from Apex Sport Fishing, and this is Rifle Gap Reservoir. Now, we just got the boat in the water. It's an afternoon deal here today, so we're going to see if we can catch something afternoon before the weather comes in. We've got a mix of clouds. We've got a mix of sun. The wind's already come up and laid back down. We're going to see what happens today, but Multi-species? Multi-species, just about everything that swims in here. All right, so we could be pike, we could be smallmouth, we could be trout, we could be walleyes, we could be perch. Perch, crappie, bluegill, there's the occasional largemouth. There you go, guys, we got a whole lot of tackle in the boat. We're getting an afternoon start, we'll see how it goes. So stay tuned, and get comfortable, it should be fun. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. All right, so I'm throwing at the next bend in the channel and the boat's sitting in like no water, guys, and I mean no water at all. If you look back, the motor's almost on the ground back here, but it's very soft mud. But somewhere right in this pocket right here where that turn is, there really ought to be some smallmouth. So we're gonna find out. And I've got my standard, what I call my finesse jig rod, a 6'9", medium light, extra fast rod. I've got eight pound Ultra 8 on here. And the Revo MGX, the rod is a Fantasista. It is a very fantastic, very lightweight, very sensitive package. And uh, still got plenty of power in it. I've got an eight pound trying 100% fluorocarbon leader on it about 10 feet long, which is about eight feet longer than I normally make them. But that's because this water is so clear that I don't want any chance that fish see in my line. And, uh, and so that's why it's so long. And there's perch in here as well. There is perch. Perch, crappie, bluegill, both trout. You got pike, walleye, smallmouth, and there's a handful of largemouth bass like a single handful. There's something. There you go. Uh, I don't know what that is. I think it's another pike. I like this little zone. But I, yeah, I mean, that's why we go to inlets, guys. how many guys. fish have we seen already? Yeah. We've caught a few, but we've probably I, seen I, a dozen actually, or more. Actually, I don't believe that is a pike. Maybe it is. No, it's a nice smallmouth. Huh. Nice small uh, you want me to net him, Chad? Yeah, we'll net him just in case. There you go. That's what we're more looking for, guys. That and and that's why you beauty. throw three inch minnows on jig heads in the inlet. <laughs> Amen to that, you hammered it, good work. All right, so I want to point out, I've been to this lake one other time, two other times in my life. One I tried to erase from my memory because eh. it, it was ice fishing and it was a horrible day. You weren't with me. And I wasn't with you. Uh, the other time I was here was, was late summer and there you go, guys. That is a beautiful Western is, Slope smallmouth bass right there. We so will, do you suspect he's We will take him all day. Pre-spawn, post-spawn? I believe that is a pre-spawner. Pre-spawn. We're gonna put her back right here, real gentle, because we need all the luck we can get. And guys, watch how clear this water is. Then I let this fish go. Look at that thing. Straight down 20 feet. And just like that, you can still see it. That is crazy, guys. When the water gets that clear, your bait needs to be realistic looking and very fast. And so far, as soon as I picked that thing up, I've been bit three times in five casts. He wanted it going fast. He does, dude. You can't. There he is. You got him. There we go. Good hook All set. All right, get reeled down on him and see what I got this time. I suspect it's a trout. It is a, a walter. Walleye. Oh, it's a cute. Isn't now, he cute? I'm going to point out this is, let me think. I believe that is the first walleye I've ever caught on the western slope of Colorado. Is that it? I don't believe I've ever caught. That's a walleye light. Yeah. But I seriously don't believe that I've ever caught one before, and that is a true walleye. They're out here, man. Now, they put triploids in here, correct? They did. So there's a naturally reproducing population, which is awfully rare in Colorado to have. Right, on the western slope especially. It's on the western slope especially, but they've been stocking it with triplet, which is a sterile. Version. Right, sterile version. That's that's to just to appease anglers. Essentially, yeah. Gotcha. And while they're getting that population established, it's kind of nice. Um, it's a one fish per person limit, 
over 18 inches. Gotcha. So it's not a great place to come and catch a pile of walleye for dinner. <laughs> right, right. Uh, if you're interested in doing something like that, maybe a front range lake, but yeah, yeah, for it sure. is a great lake to come and sport fish right. and do some catch and release and it's... Apex sport fishing, that seems <laughs> appropriate. That was a gratuitous plug for his... Yeah. His, no, uh, when I talk to Parks One, there's one right there. I think you found the pile of them. If you All don't mind, right. I'm gonna toss yeah. my jig oh, over Oh, I think there. you know he's on there. I thought he came off for a minute. He's going sideways. Uh, he looks just like the last one, bro. He might be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so my little thin fisher's getting bites at this point, guys. Now that's again, the, the cool thing about these fish is that they are unique in here. They're, they're uh, you know, being the Western Slope, that's a unique fish there. And the whole deal with them uh, over here is the concern of them getting in the Colorado River. That's where all the, all the stuff you hear about comes from. They're not, they don't want them in the Colorado River. So they don't want them getting out of this fishery. They don't want them in the Colorado River. And that's what it comes down to. But the, the triploids, even if they get in the Colorado River, aren't going to hurt anything because they are sterile. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Hey guys, you guys look down. Uh, right there, you can see that drop off. That's the main inlet channel for this lake right here. And so you guys, fans of Fishful Thinker, you guys know we do inlets, outlets, boat ramps, and dams every time. And we got here so far, we haven't caught a whole lot of fish just yet. We come over here, we'll check out this inlet. So we'll fish our way in, see if somebody shows up. But inlets are a good place to find all different species, whether they're flowing or not, because it's deep water that pushes up into here. Every time you get an afternoon rain, I'm sure a little bit of water comes down this creek as well. And uh, so we'll see what happens, but we're gonna fish our way in. And I suspect on that first turn in there is where we'll actually get bit as opposed to the main channel itself. There's one. You know, this one might have a little more weight to him. I hard to say. You want a net there? No, he doesn't have that much weight to him. Now, okay, we're headed the right direction. We're heading in the right direction. We are headed the right way. That one's bigger than the last couple. Yeah, he's another year or two older. But he needs to have another year on him before he gets to be big. But you get the idea, guys. And there's the bait. Everyone always wants to see the bait. There's that Johnson Thin Fisher right there. One of my favorite walleye baits. And you guys have seen that on Fistful Thinker a whole bunch, the, the blade bait. I've got it on an eight pound try, 100% fluorocarbon leader, about seven feet long. And uh, I've got it on 10 pound X9 braid and the brand new Abby Garcia Zeta combo right here. So it's um, a good all around, just a general purpose rod, real line combo for the West. And in this case, I have the Thin Fisher on it and see if we can catch some more of them with it. There's one right there. Oh, there we go. That's a, the That's a trout. That's a trout. Yeah. Hell yeah. I knew that was a trout. Oh, he's off. <laughs> Hooking lightning, man. Ay, ay, ay. That thing got me right there. And I want to point out a minute ago, I got big guys on the bait got bit on the drop. And it was distinct pop. And I commented that I thought it was a trout because, just because it's totally different than the walleyes that are biting right on the bottom. Big time. And, uh, and that one, as soon as I hooked him, he came rocketing straight for the surface, just like you said. 30 so, feet, man, in an instant, and they're so, jumping. It's so crazy. I want to point out that's also three species on the same bait on the same spot in the span of about three minutes. There he goes. Yeah, it was right out there where you said, man. Yeah, they're, they're relatively close to the boat. Now, you want a net? Uh, I don't know yet. Okay, I'm gonna get this up and out of the way. Get some decent head shakes, I see color. Yeah, deep color. What flavor is that thing? I like to think that's, that's a walleye. That's a walleye, bro. We'll net that one. I'll get him for you real quick. That's a nice looking catch. Take this out of here. He's coming up here, I'll bring him to your head first. And he's in there. Nicely that's done. That's well done, sir. So this, I suspect, is one of those naturally reproducing walleye. All right, that's a... Yeah. Yeah, that's a good sized fish. I mean, yeah, healthy. And look, you can see those. There's a couple oh, of little... Let me look in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are chronomids, bro. Chronomids, yeah, right? Everything are, in the lake yep. is gorging on that. Yep. Crazy. That's pretty cool, bud. Yeah. All right, you can put him back. That's a good looking fish. It sure is. Watch him go. Whoa, straight <laughs> down, bath, man. too. Now, he came out of 27 and a half feet of water, it's 58 degrees. Uh, we always talk about inlets, outlets, boat ramps, and dams. We've now caught fish in the inlet and the boat ramp. Yep, we got to so, work the dam. <laughs> we haven't been to the dam yet. <laughs> but. 
Uh, and there is no outlet except for the foot of the dam, right? Right, yep. So we don't have to worry about that. So guys, that thing is sinking. It's sinking a long ways. It's 27 feet. So even with a half ounce Johnson Thin Fisher blade bait, it takes a while to get to the bottom. And then once we get to the bottom, we're just popping it a little ways up off the bottom and letting it go right back. There's not a big giant lift and drop. Um, I suspect if you did a bigger lift, you'd probably pick up more trout. Definitely. But and he's probably spooked There we go. There it is. Right on. Nice, Q. Set. We'll take that. And uh, yeah, One. the little lift seems to be working, guys. So we'll just go with that. I don't think he's a giant. No, we got another little guy. I like it. He seemed to have a better handle on the on the bigger ones, but I got a handle on the numbers, so we'll see how that works yeah. out in the long and run. He's not bad. No, he's bigger. He's it seems to be three year classes so far. Right. That, that a we've variety. Seen. It's a good mix. And then this guy with the lawnmower engine here. But yeah, there you have it, guys. We're gonna kiss him for good luck because I need a big one. Is and if you look down, down at his throat, let's see if we can see this. If you look down in that throat, that thing is full of bugs, guys. And if we look right down in there, the thing is slammed full of bugs. So we got this walleye coming out of close to 30 feet of water, and his whole gullet is full of little bugs. So I uh, don't know exactly. I've never seen that before. The bugs are still alive, so. Not for long. Not for long, yeah, but uh, that's kind of a neat thing. I have seen walleyes eating roly polies. I've seen smallmouths with whole gullets full of spiders, but I have not seen them full of of that. Now we did see them one time at Trinidad uh, and they were actively feeding on big mayflies that were coming off and we watched them do that which I thought was really interesting. We were watching them catch bugs right under the surface. So uh, walleyes are I think a little bit more versatile feeders than what a lot of people give them credit for. And uh, you know when you, when, you, when you see them eating mayflies on the surface or you see them coming out of 30 feet of water with a belly full of nymphs uh, that are just oozing out, you know, that's an interesting deal.